you're going to be talking about money guys let me tell you earning in foreign currency is good especially when you have to convert that money into your local currency <music> Hello amazing people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I am Matilda Chimobi. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back to watch my videos. So for today's video, like from the title of this video, you already know what this video is going to be all about. We're going to be talking about money, guys. We're going to be sharing with you how much you can earn as an international student here in the UK. And I'm also going to be sharing with you guys little tips on how much I earn in the UK as an international student. Guys, let me tell you, earning in foreign currency is good. Especially when you have to convert that money into your local currency. Hey! Money is sweet. So if this is the kind of content you like, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe because the more you like, the more you comment, the more YouTube recommends my video to new audience and new subscribers. And let's get right into our video. First thing I'll be talking about is the minimum wage you can earn as an international student. This will vary depending on the age group you fall into. So for an apprenticeship, the minimum wage you earn is £4.20. This is the amount you get paid per hour. And if you're under the age of 18, that is ages from 16 to 17, the minimum wage you earn is £4.62. And if you're between age 18 to 20, the minimum wage you earn per hour is £6.56. The minimum wage for ages 21 to 22 is eight pounds 36 pence then if you're 23 and above the minimum wage you earn is eight pound 91 pence so what this means is that whatever job you're going to be getting here in the uk this is the least amount of money you're supposed to earn per hour you can definitely earn more than that but make sure that you don't get paid below this specific amount for your age group so make sure you check your age group and the minimum wage you're supposed to earn when you are working here in the uk so just in case you guys hear like car noises please ignore them my window is open and you know people are driving on the road yes so when i first moved to the uk i didn't start work immediately like i wish i did i was still trying to you know get comfortable settle down trying to balance myself with school work assignments and you know all those things because i've had exam my first semester so i was just still trying to you know get comfortable and know what's happening i mean i wish i found a job earlier on but you know i didn't but when I decided to start working, I started sending out my CV to, you know, different websites such as Indeed, CV Library, Retail Choice. On these websites, they post like job availabilities for different companies, different job roles. And guys, unfortunately for me, I didn't get a job with any of these people, which was really sad because this job bump was by fire by force. So I needed to get this job and I decided to try and that alternative. What I did was I started applying to jobs directly online. So I would go to like a company's website and check if there's any job availability for part-time students and I would just send my CV. I sent my CV to a whole lot of people and I would just send my CV to them, try to, you know, tailor my CV to that particular job role. And fortunately for me, this was how I was able to get my first job. When I got my first job, I totally forgot I applied to that particular job. Like, you know, when you've applied to so many places, when you get accepted, you'll be like, when did I apply to this job? So how I got this job is that they sent me a message saying that there is a job role in my city if I'll be available for the role. When I saw the message, I'm like, okay, so finally so a company has replied. Do you know I sent them a message telling them, yes, I'm available and stuff like that. Guys, I did not even know the company that was sending me this message. All I knew is that I wanted that job. So they gave me the requirements and everything I need to do. When they sent me the requirements, I still do not know the job I applied to. I had to send them a message and tell them, okay, and which company is this? Ask them questions about the company. And then they sent me a mail telling me the name of the company and everything. And that was when I remembered that, oh, I applied to this particular job. So that was how I got my first job. So the company I'm working with is a hospitality and event agency. Basically what they do is whenever they have events such as, you know, sports events, festivals, they recruit staff or should I say ushers to the event. So all you have to do is to serve food, serve drinks, you know, work at tills, work at counter, interact with customers, which is very interesting. Like, guys, it's a very chill job. Like, I love the job so much. So yeah, that's basically all they do. For now, I haven't done any festival job yet. All the jobs I've been going for are, you know, just sporting events. So I really enjoyed the job so much. But one of the disadvantages is that it's not every time that they have a job in your particular city. Or should I say, it's not every time they have a job in Leicester City. Most of the time, they have jobs in other cities, which is a disadvantage. And you might have to travel to a different city for a job. Guys, yeah, don't worry. Traveling to a different city in UK for a job is normal. Like, everybody travels for jobs. So it's something that is normal. Don't, it's not strange. So, yes. So let me just use, like, the last job I did the last job i did was in birmingham birmingham is not far from leicester birmingham is less than an hour from leicester which is good and the issue with this job is that they do not have events every week so i have to look for another job that i have to combine with this just to keep making that extra money so don't forget that if you have to combine two jobs you have to show that you do not work more than 20 hours each week 
so for this job they pay nine pounds per hour which is really good and something else i need to add is whenever i'm going for shifts outside of leicester i always try to make sure that the shift is like above 12 hours because i'm trying to recover my transport money i'm also making sure that it's worth the stress and besides i'm not going to be traveling to a city that is far away from leicester it has to be like neighboring cities close to leicester so that it will be cheaper for me to go and come back after my shift I mean traveling from Leicester to Birmingham is £10 to bus so you can see by the time you spend £10 going and coming down like £20 so by the time you subtract it from the money you get there's still going to be a good sum left so yes those are the things you need to consider before you know standing up and traveling to a different city for a particular job so now it's time for me to calculate like how much you can make as an international student I know I've said so much about this job let me just tell you guys like how much I earn I'm already with my calculator it's time to count money I'm just going to be using my trip to Birmingham as an example so this trip to Birmingham I was paid nine pounds per hour and I worked for a total number of 18 hours because it was a two day shift nine hours each day as you can see that is almost 20 hours per week so I was paid nine pounds so nine times 18 hours that is 162 pounds it's not every week that you get to work 20 hours some weeks you might work less than 20 hours so let's say this week i did not work up to 20 hours and i made 162 pounds for this week if you look at this i almost worked 20 hours even if i did not work for the full 20 hours so let's say you earn 10 pounds per hour and you work for 20 hours every week the amount of money you'll be making is 200 pounds and for my research if you earn below 200 pounds you don't get taxed for it and in a month you work 20 hours each week you multiply this 200 by 4 that means every month you earn about 800 pounds and for my research you do not get taxed when you earn below 800 pounds so right now school is in session that's i'm only able to work 20 hours per week but once we're on vacation once we're on school break i am definitely working more than 20 hours per week so i think this is enough explanation and enough calculation for the day i have given you like a breakdown on how much you might earn as an international student whenever you come back to the uk for your studies so we have come to the end of this video i really hope you enjoyed this particular video i also have a uk guide playlist sharing with you all the things you need to do as an international student before you arrive here in the uk and after you arrive here in the uk so make sure you check that out i'll be leaving the link on the screen so make sure you click on that link so guys thank you so much for watching and i'll be seeing you in my next video do not forget to stay safe Bye, guys.